Hi campers, this is Darren with Myra V Works. Today we're on Maristone Island and we're going to be working on this Atwood water heater behind me here. Now it's an older water heater and um, so let me show you what we got going on with this thing. Okay, so this is an Atwood GC10AE. Okay, so it's a 10 gallon water heater. Um, when you see this thing, what do you see that's wrong with it? One of these things does not look like the other. Well, others have worked on this before. So the first thing I noticed, starting at the bottom, that's supposed to be a plastic plug, and they put in a galvanized cap on it. Uh, water heaters are supposed to be flushed every year, and uh, that's supposed to be a plastic plug per Atwood spec. Another thing I notice is, is this gas valve is supposed to have a bracket that, that uh, screws to it. You can kind of see where they took the screw out here, and, and down here they have a screw, and here. So this whole thing is supposed to have a bracket that's supposed to support it to keep it from moving around. Another thing we notice is all the rust and all the the drippiness that's going on here and so we have a, a failed valve we've got the water turned off but before we did the do that it was dripping when you open that it's supposed to spring closed and it when we had the water pressure on it wasn't it was continuously running so when we see this this um, another thing this this sticker thing is not bonded and back behind here you have thermostat and the thermostat could rust the tank is going to be fine, we expect, at this point, because the tank is an aluminum tank. Um, but all these components are showing signs of this dripping right here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, back flushing the water heater. And we'll show you how we do that. And then I looked in my inventory to see if I have a bracket. I've got parts for the Suburban water heater for this bracket and burner assembly. But I don't have one for an Atwood. So we'll get one and maybe get it back out here. But we're also going to be pulling that out and taking a look at that. So let's begin the journey. Okay folks, so what we've done is we pulled the drain plug out of the water heater and it stopped dripping. So now we have our little wandy thing that we're going to put in here. We're going to see what we get come out of here. So we're starting to see some of this chunky stuff coming out. You'll see a big pile on the ground down there. And it's also kind of milky. Now you're not going to, folks, you're not going to get this from just draining your water heater. You also need to back flush. It's more of an active process, whereas just draining it is a passive. You just let the water drain out. Back flushing it is more of an active process. So. Okay, so all these white little pieces is all the stuff that we got out of the water heater. Um, like little mini hails. Um, it's kind of there. So I have seen worse, this one wasn't bad, but this still is a procedure you should do once a year. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this top valve off, we're gonna examine the back side of it. Now to do that, they do have a special little tool that they, they sell that does make this a little bit easier. Um, it's kind of C-shaped. If you're a machine kind of person, you could build your own. But uh, you lift the lever up, and it goes on just like that, and then it just kind of twists right off. Um, I've also taken these off with a channel lock. That works too, but when you got the right tool to do the job, it just really makes it easy to twist that off. So we'll do that next. So we're going to raise this lever up to get it to stay. <clears throat> this goes on there, and I think it's a seven. <clears throat> you know, mine is 7 8 fits right on that little socket right there. Okay, when I get my light shining in there, you can kind of see some of that corrosion that's been building up on that plunger there. Um, now we got the valve open. When I close it, that spring slams closed, but if uh, all that corrosion is built up in there, then it's going to leak. And if it leaks, then we have <clears throat> all this happening. So we will replace this with a new one. It's like a $26, $27 on part. Um, that's a there's there's a half inch and there's a three quarter inch so you need to know which size this is um, to know which one of these to get. Okay, and uh, the threads 
Another thing I do is sometimes it's good to kind of get a, a thread. Um, just get a, a thread. Oh shoot, what am I thinking of? A tap. There it is. Yeah, and run a tap through here. But these threads look good in here. And um, these threads also look good. So there's no reason to get a tap on that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a new pop-off valve, half inch, and we're going to get a new plastic plug. And um, since it stopped running, I'm going to uh, flush it one more time. I've gotten this side pretty good. I'm going to try to hit over in this corner over here. The tank is round, um, so it's going to settle to the bottom, but I just kind of want to really, uh, this thing puts out a lot of water pressure. I really want to scrub the, the sides of this thing. Back flush it, let it drain out, back flush it, let it drain out, etc. If, if you fill the whole thing with water, I don't know how effective this spray is going to be. So we're going to try to get this water down here now. And basically you just do this until it comes out clean. It was coming out kind of milky, and you see I'm just kind of rocking it back and forth. Uh, I've, I've got more stuff coming out here. It's big, chunky stuff. So um, what I think I might do is let this drain out and, and hit this side some more, because just in there I can see it. Um, there's all this, I don't know if it's calcium. I don't know, I'm not a geologist. <laughs> I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. I'm going to just keep doing this till it comes out clean. There's no sense in watching me do all this. So when it comes out clean is when I'll pick you back up on the other side. All right, so we went to the service trailer. I got a plastic plug, and I got a new um, pop-off valve. So we'll start with a pop-off valve first. Um, so when we look in there, it's all nice and clean compared to the other one. Another thing you're going to find about these things is sometimes, see these things are supposed to be wiggly? And sometimes we'll find these are all corroded and not moving. Um, and it's just yucky in there. So uh, the specs are the same 150, 210. Uh, 150, 210. So 150 PSI or 210 degrees. They'll, they'll, if it's weeping outside of those parameters, then it's failed. Um, so Teflon paste. You could use tape or paste. Um, I just prefer pay, uh, paste. It, uh, it doesn't make it bigger. Sometimes when you use the, the tape, it um, might make the threads a little bit bigger around. Uh, the paste kind of helps lubricate it as it screws in. Here's a trick if I forget to mention this. When we go to fill this water heater, you're not supposed to have it running unless there's water in it. So how do you know that there's water in it? So we're gonna finish capping this off. We'll fill the water heater, and then we're gonna leave this open. And when water starts to come out of here, we close it. Now we know our water heater is full, and then we can go ahead and turn it on. But So we put this on, we put this on, we back flushed it a little bit, and um, it was coming out clean. You didn't need to see all that. and. Um, now there's one more thing I want to show you. We're done with these. Um, I think it stopped raining now, so we're done with this. Inside here, there's an electrode. Let me show you. And that needs to be an eighth of an inch, and it doesn't look like it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you over here. I'm going to show you what I'm seeing, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to fix it. So hang on. All right, folks. So what I've done is I've, I've taken this... There we go. I've taken this camera and I've stuck it up inside. If you take your eyeball and you look inside of yours, you're going to see this electrode. And that's the electrode we're talking about. That gap right there should be one eighth of an inch. And what I use is an Allen key. Just put a, a, an eighth of an inch Allen key, slide it between those two. Now, um, if it's too much or too little, uh, that's going to interfere with the, uh, uh, the feedback. So this wire right here, this black wire is coming from this control board. This is the igniter. It's just your standard plug, a little flat thing, um, a little boot over the top. So this wire, when the uh, gas valve ignites here, he's also going to send a, where did my wire go? He's going to send a spar um, voltage down here to cause a spark between that gap. And as soon as, he's going to probably count to about six, and as soon as um, he detects that the time is up, he's gonna now look for millivolt current coming back through this wire. And what we're doing is we're detect what not we, what this board's doing is he's detecting a milliamp current through this wire. And the question then becomes how does he do that? Well, we're shooting a flame. 
okay gas enters here we pick up some air this is adjustable okay we're at, we're about at sea level here i would imagine we're maybe about 80 feet above sea level so i could tell just by looking that that needs to be closed quite a bit we're letting too much oxygen in uh, so this needs to be closed quite a bit we would see it open like this if we were up in colorado or, or up in the higher elevations but anyway so gas comes through here we get our our oxygen and then now we have a flame and once we get this thing fired up we'll we'll show you we'll adjust this and you'll see how the flame goes from a yellow yellow to a blue blue and, and it's all done from this adjustment right here and that's something you can do when you're traveling around if you're going up in elevation you open it lower in elevation close it anyway where was i okay so we have flame shooting through here the uh right there is a weld spot where one of those prongs bonds to this plate Okay, so he's welded on one side of the prong. This is the other prong right here. Eighth of an inch gap. I'm going to shoot a milliamp current through that flame. One side is grounded. Here it is welded. And then down here we have our screw. There better be a screw. There's a screw right there. And then all this is grounded, 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 grounded. Um, here's our ground screw here. And then we have grounding up here. Um, so one side's grounded, the other side's shooting a millivolt current. So the module is basically sending a millivolt current through this wire after he's made the ignition. And as long as the current is flowing through that eighth of an inch gap to ground, I have flame. That's what the board is saying. That's how the board knows that there's a flame. As long as there's a flame and as long as I am still not satisfied with my temperature here at 140, leave the gas valve open. Okay, so that gap of an eighth of an inch is important to get the correct milliamp current through this wire to talk to the board okay so to me it looks like it's greater than an eighth of an inch so we're going to take our eighth inch allen key slide it in there it's easy just take a screw off here this whole thing comes out and get that set up to an eighth of an inch gap and okay we're going to do that next and we'll show you what we found okay folks so i've got my allen key now i put a little bit of um what is this yellow uh paint pen on it because when it's in my big bundle i can just grab it i don't have to look but if we look here i don't know if you can see there's quite a bit of a distance here now there's one thing I want you to be careful of. If you're going to bend this, be very careful because, <laughs> I don't want to admit this, don't let the owner know, but I've bent these up, not on this one, but I've bent the bottom one up and I've broken the weld back here. So we're going to be kind of careful on it. Sometimes you can just kind of bend this metal, bend it down. I'd rather bend this metal down a little bit than, than mess with this bottom pin because it's, like I said, one time I broke that weld off and ever since then I've been very careful. So I kind of bent this top one down a little bit. And uh, now look, I've got a perfect eighth of an inch gap right in, where are you at? There we are, okay. Um, so right in there, I've got a, a perfect eighth of an inch gap right there. And that's what we're after. So now, um, and we're also aligned and our little flame spreader is right in line with the, uh, the gas valve, okay? So we are happy here. And so this, even though it's missing that bracket, we're gonna and all i did was i took this top screw off right up here uh, there we go i took this top screw off and uh, you didn't have to take the bottom off but while we got it off it's also good to look to make sure that there's no rust because i have seen where rust is on here and you've interfered with your ground for this guy so sometimes you might have a situation where there's a ground or there's some crumb crumbs up in there interfering with your ground so this all looks good we've made our eighth of an inch gap um, I've also seen where these are kind of rounded off, so that looks good. There's just some ashes, some some soot in there, but the rest of this looks really good inside. But you also want to make sure that... Uh, I find these little round chimney um, sweep things are, I don't know, like a foot long. Um, and you just kind of run it in and out of here and it'll help clean this. But this one doesn't look bad. There's some soot right here, which is an indication that it was had too much yellow in it. Probably because this was open too much. And um, I don't want to interfere with this yet. I want to see what it burns at, right now. And um, if I can ever get that adjustment just right, then that means we don't have the correct, um, here it is. Yeah, here we have 13 inches of water column is max. 10 is um, the manifold pressure we're shooting for. And the minimum is, what is that? Uh, minimum inlet gas pressure is 11 inches of water column. Uh, all about water column on another video. Just look for it. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go to a new screw, put it in here and secure this. And, um, and then uh, I, while I'm at it, let me pan up a little bit. I'm also going to put a new sticker on there. So I don't like how this is all peeling off. So we're going to put a new sticker. We're going to clean this up really well, put new stickers on right there. So we're going to do that as well. 
So I started to take this pad off right here and I, I noticed, um, let me show you what I'm seeing here, uh, if you can tell. See, that's really rusted right there, um, that pin. So what that tells me is that the it's, it's gonna fail. Now there's a trick here, you get your little right angled hook and you get it in there just right. And sometimes that really helps to pull these little pins off. There you go. See, I'm not pulling on it. I'm letting this kind of rock it out a little bit. Okay. Okay. But um, if we pull all this off, all right, let me let me get you closer and show you what I'm seeing right here. I'll quit dropping everything. So here we go. We're going to bring it a little bit closer. So you see how that, that doesn't look very healthy. So um, we're going to be replacing that as well. Okay. Okay, so here's what we have. Two, these are called thermostats. Here's what they look like, okay? Um, it's a spring-loaded deal because this plastic part puts, pushes against the outer frame, and then this is the business end of it. You want to push that against it. What we're going to do here is, um, where's our little hook? We're going to take our friend, our hook, hook friend, and you basically just, if you look at these things, you're going to see that there's that little notch right there. And uh, so you just rotate them until they... Well, I just made it come out of there. You're going to rotate them until they come out of the uh, this spot right here. So basically, I'm just going to rotate this, and you just kind of work at it until it wants to come out. And uh, I'll show you when we get it out of here. There we are. Wow, this little metal, this little rusted piece is very weak. So this was just waiting to fail, this little guy right here. Um, it's very easy to bend, so we were looking at a, an imminent failure there, okay? So we're gonna replace him. He doesn't have his mark on him, but he's gonna be the 60C. And um, so six, this is 60C, this one's the 82C. So what we want is a nice clean, this is the uh, this is the outside of the tank. It's an aluminum tank and we want a nice clean surface. So when we put our new thermostats on, it, it's actually touching the tank itself. So what I've got is an old toothbrush and um, a couple different chemicals. Uh, this is always friendly. Um, uh, be very careful with this stuff. It will eat the paint off of your RV, but it'll make easy work of getting rid of some of this um, sticky stuff because we want to make sure our new sticker is going to uh, work. Let's make sure, okay, this one's gonna be 60. So he's gonna go right over here. There we go. Okay, so now I've got my spring sprung and he is in place. So I wanna make sure he's 82. He's 82. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Okay, so we've got our, our high limit thermostat and our normal thermostat. They call it the ECO. You could call that the emergency cut out. Sometimes that's what we call them in the trade. Now I'm also gonna look at this guy. He's also a little rusted in there. Now, what this guy's job is, he's also, let me show you something here. Let me bring it a little closer. So if you look there, he's a little darkened, okay? Um, that in itself does not concern me. What this guy is, is a think of him as a thermal fuse. So if any flame shoots out of this opening here and it shoots out of your water heater, he's gonna melt this right here. Um, it's not a very expensive part, but it will shut down your water heater if you don't have one. So um, it's fine, it's working, but my concern is there's rust inside of here. And so I think what I might do is just 
cut this off right here, put a new flag connector on it, and, and have all new connections. So we're gonna do that next. We're gonna cut this, put a new connector on them, and just make all this new. We've come so far, what's another six bucks, right? So let's do that. Okay, so I've got a new flag connector on here, and this is a new thermal fuse. Now we're working on the principle that an electron traveling through a wire generates no heat. And um, so when we saw the old one and how it was darkened, that means that maybe he got some heat. So he's gonna go right here, but we're gonna put our sticker on first. Okay, so here we are at the end of the trail. So starting at the bottom, we will put in a plastic plug with Teflon paste. We're still gonna adjust this. We've adjusted our eighth of an inch gap right there. Uh, we put on a new, uh, um, uh, what is that, a thermal fuse. We've got a new thermostat, a new ECO, um, new pop-off valve. Now this water heater does have an electrical component to it. Typically on an Atwood, you're going to see a yellow and a white wire coming out of this control board. But on this model number, their electric component is on the back side. It's totally self-contained in its own world back there. And uh, we're also gonna go look at that portion of it before we put water back in this tank. Okay, so now we're on the inside, on the back side of the water heater. And um, one of these valves was leaking and it was leaking from here. So I kind of took it apart. And when we look inside, I started to clean it. And I'm like, whoa, I'm missing out on all my my cool video. So you see that kind of build up. That's kind of the same stuff we were back flushing out of the water heater and it's now on that little o-ring. So we're going to clean that up, put this back on and that'll probably fix our leak. We'll know we've succeeded when we turn the water heater back on and it doesn't leak in that little bucket right there. So let's clean that and put it back together. Okay so we've got these screws off. We're going to uh, take this cover off. Now let's give you a tour of what we're seeing here. Uh, look at my arm in here. That right there is the back of the heating element. Up here we have thermostats, if I can get my light shine. So here's our thermostats, there's our heating element. So basically, here's our Romex wire, power is coming in, okay, it's going to go through our thermostats up here, and then go to our heating element. Now the question is, is the heating element any good? So you take one leg off of your heating element, I'll take the black leg off, you put your meter into the continuity mode, so I've got it in this mode right here. And then what we're looking for is using Ohm's law, we're going to be testing for resistance. Now, we want about 10 ohms of resistance. So as you see, I've got my meter touching and we come down here, we have our 10 ohms of resistance going through that heating element. Um, okay, so what that tells us is your heating element is good. There's nothing wrong with that heating element. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna come up here and check out these, these thermostats. Now, the difference between these two, um, like I said, I, I can't point, but the one on the left does not have the reset. The one on the right, if you look there, it's got that little tail sticking out of them. That's a reset. And all I had to do was push in on that. I heard it click, and that reset it. Now, before I did that, I took my meter, and uh, those little metal parts that you can see right there, I stuck my meter. This one on the left was, I got continuity through, but this one on the right, I did not. Did not get the beep, did not get continuity. So I pushed in that little reset, that made them snap closed. So now when we, um, we have continuity of power. So when my, uh, let's follow the black wire. Let me angle this down just a little bit. So our Romex wire has a black wire, a white wire, and then a bare wire. White is gonna be neutral, black is gonna be hot. So my black wire comes up on the left side goes through the thermostat. Again, we're hunting for 140 degrees. If I'm 140 degrees, it turns off. If I'm less than 140 degrees, it turns on. Um, so I make it, if I'm less than 140, I make it through that thermostat on the left. You see it makes a little daisy chain. I come over to this guy. Better just stay still here. I come over to the one on the right. He's that he's like that ECO on the front. I don't know what this one's rated for, but let's the one on the outside is rated for 180. So let's say that this guy here is 180 degrees, but apparently he must have gotten too hot, and he tripped, and then so black comes out on the left, goes through the thermostat, daisy chains, goes through the ECO, and then goes down to my heating element. What would cause the one on the right to trip? If the water heater is ever operated without any water in it, then you guarantee this thing is going to get really hot in there. The water is supposed to act as a buffer. The water is supposed to get hot, not the air. 
So what we're going to do is we, re we reset that. Now we're going to run it and see if everything's going to work like we expect it to. Uh, one thing I want to mention down here on this um, heating element, you'll notice that I took one of the wires off when I um, checked it. That's kind of important. I want to know what the continuity is only through that heating element, not through the heating element, the wires, and everything else. So if you're going to check a heating element, you must take one of the wire legs off. And there's that, that see that black wire right there? He, he comes out of that, and he's the one that I took off. Yeah, I could have taken it off from up here, but I like doing it from down there. So at the, at the end of the trail, we've been following, on this one, we're following the trail of 120 volts. And we verified that we had power coming in. And we made it through our first thermostat. We didn't make it through the second thermostat. We reset him, and we've also verified that that's good. So let's button all this up and fill the tank with water. We'll check to make sure our leak has been repaired here. And then we'll try it on gas and electric and see if we have a happy camper. Okay, so we've turned the water on. And uh, we're going to wait until we've got this open. We can hear it coming in. And... Um, we're going to wait till water comes out of here. When we do, uh, we'll flip this close. Okay, so now we have water coming out. We're going to close that. And we see that it stopped right away. It's not leaking, whereas before it used to. Now, at this point, we can test it. We can put it on gas. We can put it on electric. And uh, we can test it. But it would be very incorrect to test this water heater on gas or electric when it's empty. The water must be in the water heater for it to operate. So let's go give that a try next. Okay, so now we're on the inside. I've got my meter set to the AC mode. I've got my lead stuck at the back end of the heating element. And um, let's turn the water heater on. Okay, we have 109 volts. And uh, so now we know that the power is going through our thermostat, our ECO, emergency cutoff, down door heating element. So now that's fixed. So what we're going to do on the back side, we're going to button this up on the back side, then we're going to go outside and check it on the gas side, the LP mode. Okay, folks, so now we're on the outside on the gas side, and um, I've got the gas switch on, but I've got it unplugged. So when I'm unplugged, have I not basically turned the switch off? So this way I can control it from the outside. So we're going to plug this in, uh, right there, okay? And we're going to look right in there if we can get it. Okay, now... Now, if I'm quiet, you can still hear this thing ticking. Let me try to get the angle. Uh, and you you might be able to see the sparking. Now, it's going to continue to go tick, 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 tick. And he's going to try three times. So you hear the clicking. I'm trying to get the angle for the ticking sound. But he's starting and stopping, starting and stopping, starting and stopping. So what's going on here? Well, when we did the cleaning and the back flush, we got it wet inside of here. So the electrode is... Ow. The electrode is uh, not happy right now. He's constantly trying to start and stop himself. And once he dries off, then it should light and stay lit. Now he'll try three times and then he'll go into lockout. Lockout means that the light is going to be on on the inside. So we're going to let him do... Was that three times? Okay, now I expect to have the light on on the inside. Let's go look. Okay, so this little light right here just came on because a water heater tried three times and he could not ignite. He, he did not catch himself on fire. Uh, so that's what this light is for. So we'll turn this off and reset it. Okay, so now we're outside. It took about, uh, let's see, three or maybe four cycles of it trying to start uh, three times turn off three times turn off uh, before it actually stayed lit and it needed to do that to dry himself out now you if I can get the angle on this um, you can see the tips glowing there that, that's about as good as I can get with this camera okay so there's our eighth of an inch gap believe it or not there's a milliamp current flowing through those two that gap right there that eighth of an inch gap um, and it's grounding one side and it's coming back to the little black wire telling it hey I have a millivolt a milliamp current therefore leave the gas valve open now remember this thing sounds like a jet engine so that's this adjustment right here so I've got this nut loose so as we adjust let me stay right here as I adjust this see how it got quieter I closed it a little bit didn't I now it's a lot quieter and we still have a pretty blue flame if I open it I'm gonna pull it back 
I'm letting too much oxygen in, okay? And you can hear this like a block away. So we close it a little bit. You don't want to close it too much. Um, but what you're looking for is a, a, a blue flame. It's okay if it has little yellow tips, but it's about right there. If I look inside, I have a nice pretty blue flame. It's, it's kind of a quiet, it's, it's not like a jet engine right there. Um, so you can see what it was like before. Now we've closed it. And again, there's supposed to be a bracket. Uh, let me zoom out. There's supposed to be a bracket supporting this that the previous guy who worked on it took off. But now we have a quiet water heater, blue flame. We see our glowing orange tip in there. And um, I think we have a happy camper. Are we a happy camper? We're a happy camper. We're a happy camper. And uh, so now we'll close this. Here we are. And uh, that is the end of our journey of the water heater. Um, now that roar you just heard might be water dripping down inside. So once that dries out, it should quiet itself down. Let's go peek inside real quick. Oh, we need to tighten this nut right here. Um, so anyway, folks, if you like these videos and you find them useful, please subscribe. And uh, we're putting new videos out constantly. And um, happy camper. Say my RV works. This is Darren signing off.